Hello everyone, we're the Hobby Farm Guys. I'm Brian. And I'm Steve. Hiding in the shadows, ready to pounce on us when we mess up, is Eric. Rawr! Speaking of messing things up, in today's video we'll talk about some of the mistakes we made keeping a flock of chickens. Hopefully you'll learn a few things from us so you don't make the same mistakes. You know what wouldn't be a mistake? Subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. Take the next few seconds to do just that. Whether you're new to keeping chickens or a seasoned veteran, we all make mistakes along the way. The end result may be added cost, loss of birds, or just a close call that makes you reflect on what could have been. In any case, the important thing is to learn from your mistakes, and if you can share them with others so they can learn, all the better. So that's what we hope to do today. By telling our stories of bad times, we all improve. Now some of the stories we're going to share are a bit embarrassing, yes. right? We debated even telling them. Some we've told before and others are just funny. But all of them have a lesson to tell. With that in mind, Brian, how about you start us off with an experience you've had? Alright. Well first, let me say that many of the mistakes we're sharing today have a common theme. Things go wrong when we rush into doing things. And one great example of that is when I needed a coop for my first flock. Once I decided to get chickens, I went out and bought some chicks and figured I'd have about seven or eight weeks of brooding until I needed to worry about having a permanent home for them. Well, I procrastinated, of course, and before long there's little time left before I needed a permanent home for them. So rather than building the coop I wanted, I settled for a kit I purchased at the local farm and ranch store. Basically, if Ikea had a chicken coop, this would be it. It wasn't very sturdy, it was drafty, and it only accommodated about half of the hens that it claimed. It ended up being a fairly expensive lesson, because after the first season, I ended up moving them into something better. So my advice here is make sure you have housing taken care of before you buy your flock. Yeah. Uh, my first mistake I'm sharing is also a case of poor preparedness. I was ready to start a flock at my new house, and unlike Brian, we already had a coop and a run in place. So I set up a brooding area in the basement and brought some chicks. Since we have some long winters around here, I set up a brooding area where I knew I could regulate the temperature as they would require. Everything was going great, the chicks were growing and putting on weight. Of course, it would still be a few more weeks until I could move them outside. Well, chicks grow fast, and before yeah. you knew it, they weren't the cute, fuzzy little chicks I brought home, they were quickly becoming chickens. And chickens, as anyone who's ever had them knows, are messy, right? They poop everywhere, they scratch litter all over, and they spill food and water. This mess in my house started to make the basement smell and look like a chicken coop, right? The lesson, have a brooding area that's well suited, keeping everything clean as your chicks grow, preferably not in the same area you're living in. Right? Now another mistake I made deals with preventing predator attacks. I know I've told this story before, but most of you probably haven't heard it. When I brought chicks home to our new house, I raised them for about eight weeks until they were feathered out and the temperature outside was warm enough to move them outside. As I moved the coop that I assembled in the garage outside, I suddenly realized there was nothing to keep predators from digging under the attached run and getting inside. So I delayed the move while I added some hardware cloth underneath. The problem was that I was short of having enough to go all the way around by about a foot. I figured they'll be okay for one night and I'll fill in the gap the next day and all will be secure. But for some of those young birds, the next day never came. A fox managed to discover them their first night in the yard, find that vulnerable spot, and took three of the pullets before I woke the next morning. The lesson here is that you should never put off taking care of those vulnerabilities. It only takes a moment of weakness for a predator to invade your flock. Very true. Well, the next lesson I'll share didn't end in disaster for my flock, <clears throat> but it sure made things difficult for me. As I mentioned before, uh, there was already an area set up for my flock when we bought our house uh, a long time ago. So the chicks that made a mess in my basement, once they were feathered out, they moved out there. The problem didn't make itself known to me until freezing weather started to set in, yeah. which around here lasts from you know October to May. Um, it turns out there was no power anywhere near the Cooper Run. And since I leave the house for work before the sun comes up and don't return until around the time it's setting in the winter, uh, having no power out there meant no light out there, 
uh, but that's not even the worst of it, right? Freezing temperatures means a freezing water supply and with no power nearby and no convenient way to run an extension cord, it meant a couple of trips to bring water in the dark each day. Uh, take it from me, having power in or near your coop will save you lots of trouble. Yeah, it sure does. Now, one more lesson I'll share deals with roosters. Whether you choose to have a rooster or not really depends on your needs, but I like having one around. So, when one of my chicks grew to be a rooster, I was pretty happy with that. And what a good looking rooster he turned out to be. He was also very good at protecting his flock, warning them to take cover when the hawks and eagles flew over, and calling to them when he found food sources. The trouble was, he was too protective. I mean aggressively protective. He would attack any people that came near, including the grandkids, my wife, and even Steve once. I put off doing anything about it because I thought he was fairly young and might get used to people being around, and boy was I wrong. He grew more and more aggressive until I finally had to remove him from the flock. The lesson here is that aggressive genes need to be culled from the flock. It isn't always easy to do, but they're likely to pass on those traits to their offspring if something isn't done to prevent it. Yeah. The last lesson I'll share deals with raising birds for meat. So I was interested in raising birds for meat when I landed on the deal of a lifetime, right? As of the local feed mill, when the owner informed me that for every bag of feed I bought, he'd give me 25 cockerels. Mm -hmm. What a deal, right? It seemed like such a good deal, I bought two bags and took home 50 birds. I figured a few months of fattening them up and I'd be able to fill my freezer. Now, getting back to the theme of not being prepared, I was not ready to butcher chickens when the time came, right? I didn't have the setup and I kept putting it off. Of course, these 50 cockerels were growing and starting to find their crow. And if you've ever been annoyed by a loud uh, crowing rooster outside your window, imagine having 50 of them, right? I quickly lost the will to keep them around until I was prepared to process them. And luckily I found someone uh, who was able to come round them up and take them off my hands. Uh, but if you want to raise birds for meat, make sure you're ready when they're ready to process. And if the deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. So those are some of the mistakes we've made with our chicken flocks and hopefully you're able to take something from these stories and able to avoid some of the same problems we had. How about you? Have you made mistakes that others might be able to learn from? If so, let us know in the comments and we can all do better. And don't forget to click the like button if you like sharing our stories. Until next time, happy happy farming everybody. Bye bye.